Welcome back. We're here with Mr. Andy Crozier, and he's with the Indiana DNR. He's going to tell us a few things that we need to know about things that are going on in the state this year. Now, one of the things we were talking about earlier was the big thing now is is bow fishing. Right. That's a sport that's growing in popularity, you know, as we speak. Right. And men or women can do that sport easily. Oh, yes. Yes. Anybody can do it. I mean, there's bows for all ages and right. different types of bows and you know to, to adapt to different people, to people's abilities. Right. Is there any special bow that maybe we should think about getting? Or you know, I think most people use a use a compound bow. Right. Uh, still, just because of the ease of drawing it and holding it back. Um, but some people still use your recurves and long bows, and then in Indiana, crossbows are legal also for you know, for bow fishing. Oh, that's good. I have one. Right. <laughs> they're they're a little powerful. You, know, you want to turn them down a little bit, but yeah. Uh, but most the majority of people that I see out there are using a compound bow. Right. Right. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. So now with the bow fishing, there's some things that people don't know that you know. Some people that haven't done it before may think they can go out and just fish and bow fish for anything. Right. Is that right. possible? Yeah, just because it swims doesn't mean you can shoot it. Right. Does not mean you can shoot it. No. In Indiana, you're only allowed to shoot rough fish, which right. includes, but it's not all inclusive, your carp, uh, bow fin, uh, your um, gar, uh, those kind of fish, shad, right. suckers. Um, Catfish are, are game fish in Indiana, so they're not. Right. They cannot be taken with a, a bow. All your other game fish are protected, like your bass, your blue, right. your crappie. Those those can't be taken. Um, yeah, we live right on the High River. Yeah, and, and that and gets confusing. It sometimes. does get confusing for people sometimes. That on on the river, Indiana and Kentucky both have joint uh, jurisdiction on there. So as long as you have a license in one state or the other, you can you can fish. Okay. When you're bow fishing, because Indiana. Kentucky differs from Indiana a little bit. They they put catfish right. as a rough fish also. Yes, they and do. And we don't like to shoot catfish. Mm -hmm. So they have a bag limit. Um, I believe it's five per day, no more than two paddlefish. Oh, I think so. Indiana, you cannot even possess a paddlefish. Um, we closed that season a few years ago for, to protect the species. Right. So if you're on the Ohio River on the main stem, you can use either license, but whichever license you're holding, you need to abide by their regulations. Oh, okay. So if I have an Indiana license and I'm on the Ohio River, I should not be shooting catfish. Right. But I could buy a non-resident Kentucky license, and then and I can still shoot the catfish. I okay? got you. And then once you go up on either side, if you go up a creek or an embayment or tributary, you're in that state's water. Right. And you have to abide by that state's regulations only. Right. It's just the main stem of the river. And we get asked quite a bit, well, how do you determine where the end of the creek is the start of the river? Well, you look at you look at the mouth of the creek, and you take the two furthest most points of land, and you just draw a line across it. It's that simple. And you can't. Once you break that line, then you're in that state's water. Well, to me, it, once you once you get anywhere near that mouth of that river or creek, you're well. Never mind. Well, it, it's easier to do I it just, that way than to try to do a like a 150 foot arc around there. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, it's hard to measure that. So, you know, if you're lined up, you look and there's there land over here, there's land over here. And you cross can that see line, the land. You cross that line, you up the creek. You're in that state's water. Right. And if I have any license, I'm not I'm not fishing anymore when I'm up there in Kentucky. Right. Right. Well, I think that is confusing. I heard some people talking the other day, and they weren't—they didn't quite understand how it all worked. So. Right, right. We That's run into right. it because, I mean, just like uh, in Indiana, the bag limit for fishing, the bag limit on crappie is 25. Right. In the river, it's 30. So what if I go in the river and I, and I catch 30 crappie, crappie, but then I go up Bryant's Creek to go to the ramp to pull my boat out? Am I in violation or am I, am I not? I don't know, are we? <laughs> no, we okay. have to prove where you caught it, okay? How are you going to prove that? Well, that, it's our job, all right? But we, we don't run into that problem at all, but that, that's what I'm saying. You have to... So we take a picture the every time we catch change. one? Uh, no, oh, no. Okay. The, but the, but the, uh, the regulations change depending on where you are, so you need to be right. aware, in this area especially, you need to be aware of Kentucky and Indiana fishing regulations. And river and creek are... Stream. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 governed differently. Right. If you look in the Indiana fishing guide, and I'm sure yes. Kentucky's the same way, there's a section for the Ohio River. Okay. It's separate. It, the the re regulations for the Ohio River are slightly different than the state of Indiana, so they're they're listed separately. Okay. Um, same, not not that many people go there, but Lake Michigan has its own perf you know, section in there well, also. But that would help people understand, because I know if you're a fisherman, and mm -hmm. most of these people are, they're going to be going. At to the big lakes, so they're going to understand that when you say it's like Lake Michigan, they're going to understand right. that that has yes. the same. It, you know, Lake Michigan's a, a, a different body of water, so it has different. It has salmon, right? Uh, so they have 
you know, we don't have salmon in the high river. We don't have salmon in our creeks and streams no. and our lakes, you know. Shucks. So, yeah, that's the only place that regulation applies is up right. there on the Lake Michigan and the, the tributaries and streams feeding right. into it. So they have a special section just for that. Oh, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So now with the boats, are there any regulations with the boats that are you use fishing? Boats are, are pretty much universal nationwide. You have to you, know, you have to have it registered with the state of its primary use. Right. Um, then you have to have life jacket, a wearable life jacket for everybody on board. Mm -hmm. um, if your boat's over 16 feet long, right. you need to have a throwable life jacket on board, which we call it a Type 4, but it's the seat cushion with the straps on it. Oh, yes. It's the one that if someone goes in the water, you throw it to them. Yes. And they can grab hold of it and float until they get rescued. Right. Okay. Um, and you, know, you have to have a sounding device, a fire extinguisher, and then inboards have some more regulations than outboards have, and it's just, you know, take a boater education class to learn it all if you're new to boating yes. because you'll learn things real quick like the rules of the road, um, you know, what these red and green buoys on the river mean. Oh, that's a big one. Yeah. What do they mean? Well, yeah, I've seen boats come close to being sunk because they're too close <laughs> you, to a bar. If you're drawing a lot of water, you better stay between the buoys yeah. because that's where you have guaranteed nine feet of water right. on the Ohio River. And it's for the barges. It's for navigation right. of commercial traffic is what it's for. And the smaller boats need to yield to the barges. They need to get out of the way. The barges can't stop or maneuver right. quickly. And, and if they do stop, people don't realize this. They're so big, you don't think about it. But if they stop and there's a heavy wind, it can start to turn them, and they, they'll they lose control and, and actually spin in the river. No, that's not good. And it, it's hard for them to get, get back underway. Yeah. So um, stay out of the way of the large vessels. Don't anchor in a channel ever. It's, right. That's against the law, for one thing. Never tie off to a buoy. That's against the oh, law. Oh, yeah. Right? They're not for you to tie off, except the mooring buoys that are out there. And they're huge because they're for the barges. Right. Um, on some of our inland lakes, there are some mooring buoys, but you have to have a permit to, and they leave their boats there on our marinas. They're just a big buoy you tie your boat to, and a right. tender boat comes out and picks you up and takes you back. Oh, neat. It's courtesy. Yeah. Right. So. Wow. Know the rules of the road. And we don't have a road. But right. That means it's more important you need to know the rules so you know which side to pass on, who has the right of way. Yes. Boater education courses, you know, are, are very good for beginning boaters to get a big leap ahead in understanding right. of how to operate the boat safely. Well, I think that's important because we've got a lot of young people now that are thinking, oh, well, this is this is fun. I'm going to go do it. Mm -hmm. And they don't realize when they go to do it, there's there's rules or don't go by what so-and-so said. Exactly. Or yep. Uncle John said this or, you know, Uncle mm -hmm. Bert, whatever. You need to read it. Right. And the rules change. They change every year. Matter of fact, Indiana's new hunting regulation book just came out this right. past week, and we got the copy at, at my office this last week. Um, but to find any of the DNR rules and publications, just go to www.in.gov backslash DNR. Right. And then you can you can pick fishing, hunting, camping, right. whatever from there. And the, all the regulations are online. And stay and up to date. Stay up to date. Every every year on. something changes. So right. you know before you go back out for the for the new year. You know, check the regulations, see if anything that, that you like to do has right. changed. Right. You know, possibly the bag limits changed or the seasons changed. You don't want to be out there a month early if they move oh. the season back a month. No. You know. That's and, a pretty big fine, isn't it? Uh, it can be. Oh, it can be. Oh, gosh. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and it's happened. We've, you know, we've caught guys. They thought they were totally legit. You know, they're really embarrassed when they find out they're not. But as I hate to tell you, they moved the season on you this year. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah, you need to read every year. You do. You keep up on date on all the rules, um, that, that, that uh, especially the safety rules and, and, and any seasons right. or bag limits that change. Right. Yeah. Now, this is something I didn't ask you about earlier, but with the Farmer's Almanac, do you do you notice anything with the Farmer's Almanac and like it says, it, this is a good time to go fishing or this is a good time? What do you... You know, I... I I, I look at the Palmer Salt I'm like for planting a garden and things like that. Right. But uh, I have a really cool app on my phone oh. <laughs> that seems to be pretty accurate. It has the the major and minor feeding times each day, and a lot of people use those things. Yeah. Uh, one of my best ones is the moon phases. When's the full moon? When's the dark of the moon? Oh yes. And you know, I, I grew up being told full moon and three days either side of it, dark of the moon three days, best fishing times. It's kind of proven. I think that's yeah. You know, I agree with you. And you know, wind out of the east, fish bite the least. Yeah. Well, now, doesn't that all come back from the farmer's almanac? Yeah, it probably book? does. It probably does, yeah. Because it sounds the same. That's a thick book, though, Deborah, and I don't read You don't want to books. read that book? No, I read thin books. And okay. Well, you get the app. That's right. I get the app, and I have to look up what I want to look up. We're going to find out what the app is after a while, and I'll put it on my phone. <laughs>
so then I'll have it. That's right. <laughs> so, well, do we have anything else we need to cover today? Um, well, you you, you mentioned yes. frog season. That's right, I did. Uh, it opened about a month ago in Indiana. Yes. I think it opens a little earlier in Kentucky. I'm not going to say the date, but I, I think I saw one of your good friends, Tim Farmer, mentioned on yes, TV the other day. Yes. Um, but uh, frog season in Indiana runs from June 15th to the following April 30th. Right. And, uh, you know, you want to make sure you stay in that season because we'll protect yes. them during the breeding season. And, and that's why it's closed yes. during that month and a half is because mm -hmm. of breeding season. Right, exactly. That's when they're laying their eggs and they're, you know, they're moving right. around quite a bit. And, and uh, you, you try to protect it so that you know, get the young frogs for next year. Well, yes. Yeah. And then a new season, fairly new to Indiana. It, it, they started several years ago, but we have a season on turtles now. It used to be unlimited. Oh, year -round. wow. And our turtle season opens up July 1st, so it's yes. open now. And uh, and there's there's limits on what you can take and what, yes. what type you take. So you want to read the regulations on that if you're if you're into you know turtle hunting or. Turtle so if I go to get a snapping turtle about this big, it's not good. Not going to be legal. That's not. No. <laughs> it has to be pretty big. Yeah, well, it's bigger. Yeah, we try to protect it. Takes a long time for them to grow. It does. So you don't, you don't want to take all the little ones out. No. You know, and uh, you'll have anything it. in the future. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, and if you see them on the road, give them a break. They're not that fast. Well, I have my daughter gets mad at me. I. I'm sorry, I stopped for all the turtles. <laughs> and I get out of the car, and whichever direction that turtle's headed, I just pick them up and take them to the other side of the road in the direction they're headed. Yes. And I, as some people don't realize it, if they're headed in a certain direction, that's because that's where they're going to either lay eggs or, or mate, because they're going back to their original. So, what do, you, do you know why that they're always on the roads? No. Turtles find their mate by sight only. And they have to see. They can see a long way down a road. That's why they're out on the roads. You gotta be kidding! I'm not kidding. That's what I've been told by the biologists. So, well, that makes sense. Yes, that really yeah. does. And as far as you stopping and moving, that's that's perfectly fine. That, that's great for everybody. That make sure you're doing it safely. Oh, if, if you're on a busy yeah. highway, I don't I don't, <laughs> don't advocate no. stepping out and trying to stop traffic to move the turtle. Don't get yourself no. run over. I usually turn around and come back, and whoever's in the car, I'm like, okay, let them get out. Good somebody, thinking. No, no, they won't get out. Oh, okay. No, they, they're like, I'm not touching a snapping turtle. Yeah. So I right. have to get this big, huge snapping turtle. So I tell them that the car's coming, move the car, come back and get me. Right. So right. I just take it to the other side of the road, and yeah. sometimes they are pretty big. Yeah. Now the snapping turtles, they're just moving from body of water to body of water. Right. But for, for the box turtles. They actually find their mates by sight, and that's that's why their the roads are so nice for them because oh. grass is starting to grow. Now I feel bad because I take them over to the edge of the road and put them in the grass, and they can't see anything. <laughs> hey, I'm sure you turn around and walk back out when you laughed. No, I don't. Well, at least he's not hit when I go by. That's right. That's, that's what right. I always worry because they just sit there and people run over them. Well, they're you know, they're not that fast. No. So. So why well. Maybe we just need to put flat rocks here and there on the. You know the signs you see on the highway about the highway workers give them a break. Give the turtles a break. Well, I, I, I do. <laughs> Some people don't. Okay, but. all right. Um, so, do we need to remember anything about frog gigging? I mean, there, some people may think you can go out with a 22 and hunt frogs or a, a gig or a spear. Uh, again, There's regulations uh, yeah, with that I, I'm, also. I'm not sure on, on Kentucky's laws in Indiana. Right. You know, you can use a, a bow and arrow. Right. You can use a gig, um, spear, hand grab alone. Um, gosh, fishing, a fishing right. lure like that. Uh -huh. But... Several several different methods are legal. Right. Um, Twenty two rifles are not legal right. in Indiana, so we you can use a, a pellet gun or, or a, oh a BB gun. But, well, I didn't uh, know that. Right. So well, that'd make it easier. You don't have to get bit. as close to them. Yeah. Yes. Hand grab is the funnest part. It is, but I hate sinking into the mud up to my knees <laughs> to try to gig a frog. You know, it's just. You can't get frogs without getting dirty. Well, I know that. That's why I don't wear good clothes when I go. <laughs> I make sure I go to have fun. Yeah. So, well, this has been wonderful. I really appreciate you coming well, and talking to I, us. Thank you for having me in. Well, I think it's, well, I appreciate it because when you overhear conversations and you know people don't have things quite accurate. Right. If we, if we present it, then they'll hopefully hear it and do it the right way. Right. And, so, and. People can visit the website I gave earlier, or right. or they can call the the, the local um, conservation office for their right. district, and uh, that the phone number is listed on the website also, okay. and and ask us. Right. If you got a question, get a hold of your local officer. Yes. Or get a hold of my office and talk to me. Right. And we'll give you the we'll give you the right answer. Yeah, we go over that all the time. Don't ask somebody at the coffee shop. And right. Don't, and don't put it on Facebook. Yes. Is yeah. it okay to do this? 
Yeah. Everybody's going to tell you something different. You need to call the source. Right. So. If somebody starts that one, my cousin told my brother this. <laughs> no, I'm yeah, done. You, you already lost the accuracy right there. So go to the horses. Yes. Go, go to the source and then get it right from the horse's mouth. Well, this is great. And hopefully we'll be able to start doing a little more and kind of let people know what's going on with the PNR and what you've got, you know, events and things. Well, so. we're... We're always uh, always welcome to share information with you, and, and we're available for you, so just give us a call. Well, we're going to be calling you, so. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, we really do appreciate you being here, Andy. Thank you, Deborah. You're welcome. Appreciate you. We really appreciate our sponsors, and as always, we thank you for watching. Looking for that special gift for your favorite outdoor enthusiast? or for yourself, you'll find it here. DG Power Sports has all your outdoor sporting supplies and parts. We're located at 10390 Highway 421 North in Milton, Kentucky. We're just two miles from Madison, Indiana and only a short distance from the Dirty Turtle Off-Road Park in Dakota Racetrack. We are open Tuesdays through Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. I am Darren Gross. Thank you for your support and I look forward to seeing you. Thank you.